right, we've turned the calendar from January to February, and that means I'm spending a lot of time thinking about catching speckled trout on topwater baits. It's my favorite time of year to do it, February and March. You've gotta be able to pick your days, but the fishing can be fantastic. And this is when I catch my biggest speckled trout of the year. Now, conditions are not gonna be really perfect for it today, particularly this morning. You got what you need? Yep. As you can see, I'm with my buddy Justin Bowles. But we're at the bottom of a falling tide. Also, water temps are down, they're about mid 50s or so. That's just too cold for topwater trout. But I think as the day warms up, those fish may rise to the surface and we may catch some pretty big speckled trout. At least that's the plan. First thing this morning, though, it's gonna be jerk baits and corks, but we're on a speckled trout hunt, so come along with us. All right, Justin and I are not gonna try our topwater baits yet. Water temps are in the upper 50s, 57 in here. Not only that, but the water's crazy, crazy low, extremely low. So we're focusing on deep bayous and canals where we're hoping these fish are concentrated from being pushed out of these lagoons. Water in here is spectacular, absolutely gorgeous, and we are seeing some bait. So we're just gonna have to explore and see what we can find. Gotta be some trout in here. It looks like the water's moving this way, huh? Can you tell? I feel like we're fighting. fighting it, right. Which I would think would be a rise, wouldn't you? Yeah. I like to throw my popping course right into the sun. <laughs> right, we might do that till the tide comes up. There he is. There he is. That's something nice, whatever it is, Justin. Might be a red. I tell you, it's acting weird, huh? Is that a cat? That's a freshwater cat. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at that. Yep, wow. big old freshwater cat. You got a net? Yeah. All right, we won't get skunked. Okay, surprise. I got excited because that's right where they should be. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. The tide really isn't doing a whole lot. I mean, I think it's probably coming against us. But my cork isn't flying, that's for sure. Right. Water's too pretty no, not to be fish. This looks good up here if the depth stays decent where that water's pushing through. Right there. That's a fish. Speckled trout. That's what we came for. Yeah, there had to be some here. All right, not a bad one either, Justin. Shrimp Creole color TKO shrimp. Matrix Shad sells them as shrimp Creole color. H&H &H sells them as red ice. It's the same bait, same exact look. Trout love it. Words about to come out of your mouth, what? Let's go look for red fish. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you say last cast, like they know. All right, so Justin and I have decided to put the trout on hold for a little bit just because the conditions just really aren't conducive. Water's exceptionally low. We did hit some canals. I cut through some of these lakes thinking that the fish would be concentrated in those canals, but we only caught a catfish and one trout. So you kind of got to take what the conditions are giving you. You missed him. <laughs> and right now the conditions are giving us redfish, or at least that's what we think. And Justin just missed a bite. All we're fishing now is a man-made canal. It's got about six feet of water in the middle. And you can see from these banks how far out this water is. So a situation like this, you could really find some fish stacked up. That's what we're hoping happens. I think we got a decent range today, huh? Like a foot? Did you look? So there's a little bit of water mixing there. Is it just wind? Mm-hmm, here hit one. Hit another one. Shh. 
shell. Oh, there he is. Knew there had to be one there, Justin. You knew it. That's a pretty big fish. <laughs> Come on, you gotta have more in you than that. Dude, that fish did not fight at all. I know, huh? He hit pretty aggressive. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's a fairly stocky fish right here. So Justin, I saw this little cut here. It's got shell on the bottom, water coming this way through it. We think it's a rising tide right now. We're just pushing the water in through here. It just looked too good. And sure enough, it was good. All right. You would think they'd want this crawl with it being cool. With it being cool and with the water not moving much. Yeah. If we find the right situation, we could potentially slay the reds. This water being this far out, I think shoot a fish in a barrel. I missed one. Another hit? <laughs> Oh, heads up, heads up. <laughs> that may have been shell. Put it doink something. Oh, there he went. You saw yeah, it? yep, sure did. I wonder if that's what hit me. So I haven't hit any more shell. You see a fish? I see a wake, yeah. How could they not hit us? Throw repeated baits in there. Dude, look at the clouds. They were all sitting out here. Yep, they were. You're exactly right. We came right up on them. Yep. And we staged out of the mouth. Dude, it had to be it had to be a half dozen fish at least. Based on these clouds. Oh, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Dude, did he smoke it? Another one? I think it, well, I think it may be real shallow right there. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right. So Justin and I just kicked up a big school of fish and we threw out in front of them. Now if you can see the dust clouds, they're absolutely everywhere from this school of fish that's sitting right outside this little cut. Hoist him. I got a bite on the cast right before that one. And then this one connected. Good healthy red. Got him Justin? There we go. Now we're on him. <laughs> When the conditions give you redfish, you take redfish. Oh. oh, you lost a claw. I hate throwing that thing with one claw. Got him? They won't hit it with one claw. Justin, man, dude. I don't know what's going on. Check your barb. Lockdown drag with braid and a freaking flipping stick. Oh, you sucker, man. Come on. No, they're not hitting aggressive. You're right. Get him, Justin. What are you throwing? What color? White. White matrix craw. Best eating fish. Nice. All right. You just said there was bait on this point. Made me throw a Texas rig. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by H and H Lure Company, and by Versa Max Corks, and by SportsmansOutfitters.com, and by Cito New Orleans. And by Death Grip Jig Heads. 
No, my first one wasn't. There you go. Now you got a hook in one. I just gotta throw where the fish are. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. As soon as it hit the water. <laughs> Mine's a fruit, Justin. <laughs> Doubled up. <laughs> Doubled up. So the bad news, Justin, somebody's got to get that net. Oh, yeah, it's some big fish. Rubber stamps, huh? Wow. Wow. All right, let's get the net. Come on. Come on. Uh, <laughs> all right double look at that two rubber stamp redfish let me just say lengthwise i'm saying about 25. yeah mine will probably be 27. 20. <laughs> justice i'm sure is a little bigger caught mine on a raptor tail junior crawfish justin caught his on a matrix craw white that was awesome day like today that's a day maker huh? yeah hit me that hook out please well i'll tell you this mine hit like i hadn't engaged a reel then he hit i think he was probably lit up because of yours I have that on him. yeah i understand fish and women huh there he is there he is oh goodness he's a big fish These are uh, these are Saturday tournament winners. Yeah. I think this might be the biggest of the day. If you want to hand me the net, I'll get it. Oh, I did you? Yeah. <laughs> Blame it on me. All right, all right, all right. All right, Justin and I discovered a very specific pattern today that kind of held throughout the area that, that we're fishing. As we were running in to go trout fishing, Justin saw a bunch of redfish wakes along the shoreline. So we filed that on memory banks and we came back and hit that specific area. What we found is that pattern held true throughout this whole area that we're fishing. Justin, what do you feel like the fish were doing today? Um, I feel like the water was extremely low, uh, lowest I've seen in a long time out here. Uh, so it pretty much cut us off on the trout fishing. We tried the, the deep areas um, adjacent to flats and it didn't produce anything so we transitioned to redfish. We saw some reds waking on the way in in the main bayous. So we, we, when we transitioned to red fishing, we, we got into the main bayou and focused on areas where there were little cuts in the bank and um, they wanted a flat out of the cut in the main bayou so with shell on the bottom once we figured that out and figured out that's where they were holding fish we just sort of got on the map and looked at areas some areas i've never fished before some i have and uh just basically stuck to that game plan and it worked out well like this is a this is a main bayou here's a little cutout like we would focus on this is so shallow you there's no way to get into it at all um but the fish would be hanging right on the outer edges of it and sort of same deal all the way down. Now we actually did try some ditches and the fish were not in them. I guess because this water is just so, so far out, the fish were in the main stuff, grouped up at the mouths of the little cuts going into the big bayous and big canals. Anyway, it was an awesome pattern. It definitely paid dividends. What? No, look at, look how little, look at this. Look what this fish just spit up. A little, it almost looks like a little storm minnow, huh? Mm -hmm. A little goby or something. I don't know what that is. And then these little tiny crabs. Look at this. A fish that size eating these little crabs. Look at that. I think that's the same as that first one. Yep. All right, Justin and I are about to call this a trip. We had visions of catching topwater speckled trout today, but the conditions just did not allow it at all. Extremely low water and high winds. The water never came up, 
much at all. We did have a rising tide most of the day, but it hasn't come up. I mean, it started so low to begin with, just wasn't gonna happen. We didn't even throw topwater baits. We just recognized the conditions were not right. So we transitioned to the redfish game, and boy, it was fantastic. Found a very specific pattern here. Caught some beautiful fish, really at the upper end of the slot. Almost too big, but a whole lot of fun to fight and catch. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so be notified whenever we post a new video. If you haven't done so yet, click the join button to become a member of Marshman Masson. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.